We turn our focus to politics now, from tensions inside the White House to pulling out of the Paris Climate Accord. And we break it all down with Matt Schlapp. He is chair of the American Conservative Union, and Corrine Jean-Pierre, a senior advisor to MoveOn.org. And welcome back to both of you. So let's we let's be crassly political here. We talked earlier, Matt, in the program about the substance of the president's decision right. and and the pushback on it. What was the political calculus behind this, do you think? You look at all these polls, most polls will tell you that Americans support the idea of fighting climate change. But it's that's really not the right question. It's digging down deeper. The real question about climate change is are they willing to pay more to fill their tank with gas? Are they willing to pay more? for their utility bills? Are they willing to take some of this American energy? We're now the world's leading supplier of energy and take it offline, which has a big impact on U.S. jobs. And that's the real question. And by the way, cuts across party lines. Most Americans think that what they're asking them to pay for, for this crusade on climate, is simply not worth losing jobs or paying more for energy. It makes it sound like a winning uh, decision today, Corrine. I think what happened today, what we saw today, what Donald Trump did was, it was a political play. That's all it was. It wasn't about the economy. It wasn't about the environment. Um, it wasn't about businesses. It was purely about that small shrinking base that he has, that he needs to placate with on, when it comes to every tweet, every action, every message that he, he, put, he puts out is all about them. He continues to give them the red meat that he feels that they need. And that's what we saw. And if, and if anything, we really saw Steve Bannon um, winning the day with that speech as well. Well, is, it, is there any risk, political risk, in what the president did, Matt? You're sure. Yeah. Sure. I think if it is about politics, people will see through that. I actually think it's something deeper. It's a campaign promise he made to the working men and women across this country who have not seen their economic prospects improve. You see that on poll after poll. I think it's the number one reason Donald Trump is president and that his number one gauge of his success is if the economy can get chugging and we can make these folks feel and actually know that their economic prospects are improving. If he can't do that, I think he's going to have political trouble. Can I just add, Judy? There's a poll, speaking of poll, there's a poll that shows 70% of Americans actually agreed with the Paris Accord. 55% were Republicans. So there were Americans who but were if behind. You, if you dig we're deeper, this. the real political question is are you willing to pay the higher taxes, the credits, and all the things that you have to do to make carbon more expensive? to take it off the grid, and that's where it gets dicey for your side. Well, I think the bigger question is our planet, and wh what are we gonna leave our children with? You have five kids, I have a kid, and our grandchildren with. If we don't actually take responsibility to what th this country, our country, is doing to the climate. Let's also talk about uh, what's been happening inside the White House, Matt. A lot of uh, s suspense built up today over what the president was gonna do at a time when there's been a lot of reporting uh, about unsettled, uh, the unsettled nature of how things are going uh, with the staff. I haven't read any of that. <laughs> well, it's been in a couple of news organizations. Let me put it that way. You talk to people in the White sure. House. I mean, is that overblown? No. Are people feeling, okay, wh no, what's going on? No, it's not overblown. And my belief is that the president is impatient over the fact that there's been some bungling on some of these rollouts and some of these decisions. There's been way too much leaking. There's always leaking in White Houses, but this is this is a journalist dream come true because you have 18, 20, 22 people talking for stories. It's out of control. And I think he knows it needs to tighten up. And I believe that he's communicated internally that he expects us to tighten up. And if it doesn't get better, and he's got to up his game too, um, if it doesn't get better, I think he's going to make a lot more changes. And, and Corrine, what is, I mean, is this just all an upside for Democrats if the president continues to have these kinds of issues or are, you, are Democrats basically just watching from the sideline? I think we just watch for it uh, on the sideline. I think he's his worst, his, his worst enemy. I mean, look, when it comes to situations like this, and you know, you've worked for a president, I've worked for a president, the fish really rots at its head. This is Donald Trump's responsibility. There's no one else to blame but himself. He's the one that tweets off message, not his staff. He's the one that says, things that doesn't make sense, that really angers a lot of people, um, including, you know, people who even voted for him are a little concerned about what he's doing. And when, we see that in focus groups. When you say he needs to up his game, your yeah. words, what did you mean? Look, I mean, there's a there's an independent counsel. There's an investigation going on. He's got to be careful about how he talks about that. My advice is for the White House to simply, you know, go along with the investigation. 
uh, to not comment on the investigation. Don't do anything that makes it look like you're putting any pressure on the investigation. I understand the president and his team are frustrated because they don't see any there there. But I, I think they need to do that. I think as far as the staff is concerned, I think it was absurd that the Russian delegation was able to go into the Oval Office with recording devices and cameras. They didn't know who was going to get the photos. The Keystone Cops part of this must end. With, with, with an outsider president and an investigation going on, the staff has to be twice as good, and they can't afford to make these kind of mistakes. And Kareem, no matter <clears throat> what is going on in the White House, if Donald Trump's base, the people who voted for him, like the basics of what he's doing, whether it's the climate decision or, uh, some, I don't know, his attempts to set up a travel ban, even though that hasn't happened yet, it really does it really matter politically whether the White House is, quote, dysfunctional or not? I think it will at some point. I mean, there's 2018 coming right around the corner, and that's going to hurt Republicans what we see Donald Trump doing, because it's not just Republicans, not that small base that, that, he, he, that got him to the, the White House. It was also Democrats and independents that got him into the White That's House. True. And, so and by the way, he has a lot of them on his staff at the White right, House, but, too. But here's the thing. Uh, you know, if you look at the House and some of these suburbs that they have to win, the Republicans have to win, you need support outside of your Republican base. So it is going to hurt them when it comes to 2018. I have a feeling this may not be the last time we have a chance to talk about this. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> Kareem Jean-Pierre, Match Lab. Thank you both. Thank Thanks, you. Judy.